In previous videos, we've been talking about the infrastructure projects that are being carried out in the Philippines. But now, imagine for a moment the impact that all these projects will bring to the economy of this country in the next decade. In this video, we'll analyze how has Philippine infrastructure impacted its economy? What measures has the new government taken to achieve favorable results? Will the Philippines become one of the largest countries in Asia in the next decade? So get comfortable, because we're going to answer all these questions. Let's get started. The Philippines has demonstrated exciting results over the last few years. With the help of multilateral financial institutions, especially the Asian Development Bank, or ADB, this Southeast Asian country is advancing in its economic development, highly concentrated on infrastructure. Overcoming the COVID-19 pandemic was essential for the Philippines' return to stability and economic growth. The severe confinement, one of the strictest in the world, caused the biggest drop in growth of the century, 9.6%. Until then, the country had enjoyed an economic boom without interruption for at least 21 years, with an average GDP growth rate of 5.8% in the decade 2009 to 2019. But the recovery from the health crisis can be described as brilliant. The Philippine economy has already closed 2021 with a growth rate of 5.6%, far exceeding even that predicted by the IMF. As if this were not enough, the second quarter of 2022 recorded a GDP increase of 7.4%, exceeding all expectations. Furthermore, the forecast couldn't be more favorable. Over the next decade, the Philippine economy is expected to grow rapidly, with total GDP increasing from $440 billion in 2023 to $800 billion in 2030. What's the basis of such a favorable current situation? Mainly in sizable public investment programs, as well as in the boiling of domestic consumption, which is growing at double-digit rates, but also in the stage that began with the new government that took office in 2022 and has shown from the beginning its commitment to the introduction of essential reforms such as energy policy and the continuation of the large previously existing infrastructure programs. Infrastructure development has been a key element of this country's development plan to increase economic growth since 2016 under then-president Rodrigo Duterte. In 2020, the Philippine budget reaffirmed its commitment to developing its infrastructure as an important driver of its economic growth. It was $80.3 billion, approved at the beginning of that year, of which $13.4 billion would be for infrastructure, equivalent to 16.6% of total spending. The funds were distributed through two government agencies, the Department of Public Works and Highways, or DPWH, and the Department of Transportation. The DPWH received $11.4 billion, a 25% increase from the previous year, while the Department of Transportation received $2 billion, a 45% increase. The Build, Build, Build program was the key element of President Rodrigo Duterte's plan to increase economic growth since he took office in 2016. It included important projects, such as the Manila Metro, for $7 billion, the largest in the BBB program, and the North-South Commuter Rail Project in Luzon. At the same time, a series of expressways and bridges were being built throughout Manila, while the remaining expressways were being upgraded and expanded in the Visayas and Mindanao regions to address connectivity issues. In addition to the immediate economic benefits associated with the construction of large infrastructure projects, efforts to improve the transportation network were intended to generate a number of long-term benefits. An improved network would facilitate the flow of goods and people across the country, which in turn will improve logistical efficiency for trade, potentially enabling the expansion of various export industries. With this, the increase in infrastructure development and related activity was expected to boost GDP growth. Since, in 2019, it was 5.9 percent, its worst figure in eight years, missing the government's growth target of 6 to 6.5 percent, according to official statistics. At that time, the IMF's GDP projected growth of 6.4% and 6.5% in 2021 and 2022, respectively. Now let's move on to the new government and analyze their respective decisions. If you find this video insightful so far, please like it. It would mean a lot to us. The country's new administration under President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has experienced a period of economic strength since coming to power in June 2022. The country was expected to record GDP growth of 7.6% by 2022, 
ahead from government projections of 6.5 to 7.5 percent, one of the highest growth figures recorded in the region. Furthermore, the unemployment rate was recorded at 4.2 percent in November 2022, below pre-COVID-19 pandemic levels. Speaking at the Philippines Economic Briefing in London, Marcos's administration officials outlined how they'll achieve their goals. Expanding trade and exports is a key component. The country has removed its restrictions on commercial imports, foreign investment, and ownership of domestic companies. Under the Philippines Foreign Investment Act of 2022, foreign investors can for the first time own 100% of a service company such as telecommunications, shipping, and railways. Public services, including seaports, electricity transmission, and water distribution systems, allow foreign ownership of up to 40%. Separately, under the country's amended Retail Trade Liberalization Law, the minimum paid-up capital for foreign investors was reduced from $2.5 million to $500,000. Requirements on net worth, retail branches, and history rules have also been removed. Felipe Medalla, Governor of the Banco Central Indi Filipinas Central Bank, also present at the event, said there was a high domestic-driven demand and he expects exports to grow. This aligns with the government's goal of strengthening the national economy in the event of international shocks or a global recession. Investment in infrastructure also came to the fore. In December 2022, Maharlika Investment Fund was proposed, which would raise the funds to support infrastructure projects. To meet its infrastructure goals, Public-Private Partnerships, or PPPs, are being encouraged. As of the end of December 2022, there were 297 PPPs in various stages of implementation, worth a total of $94.6 billion. That being the case, let's now analyze the economic forecast for this country. The Philippine economy has recorded a third consecutive year of strong economic growth in 2023. After GDP growth for calendar year 2021 rebounded to 5.6% year-on-year, and the strong growth momentum continued in 2022 at a pace of more than 7.6% year-on-year. With infrastructure projects and the easing of pandemic-related travel restrictions since 2022, it's also allowed a gradual recovery of domestic and international tourist travel during 2022 and 2023. International visitor arrivals are estimated to have reached 5.1 million by mid-December 2023, surpassing the government's international tourism arrivals target of 4.8 million for calendar year 2023. International tourist arrivals have approximately doubled compared to total arrivals of 2.6 million in 2022. Before the pandemic, in 2019, the gross value added of direct tourism as a percentage of GDP was estimated at 12.7% of GDP, including domestic and international tourism spending. International tourism spending was estimated at $9.8 billion, while domestic tourism spending was estimated at $56.2 billion. Due to the importance of domestic tourism in the overall contribution of tourism to GDP, the continued recovery of tourism could be a major growth driver in 2024. Continued rapid GDP growth of around 5.6% year-on-year is forecast for 2024, helped by strong and sustained private consumption spending, a rebound in government infrastructure spending, and improving remittance flows. Over the next decade, the Philippines economy is projected to grow rapidly, with total GDP increasing from $440 billion in 2023 to $800 billion in 2030. A key driver of growth will be rapid growth in private consumption spending, driven by strong growth in urban household incomes. By 2033, the Philippines is projected to become one of the trillion-dollar economies in the Asia-Pacific region, joining mainland China, Japan, India, South Korea, Australia, Taiwan, and Indonesia in this group of the largest economies in APAC. This strong growth in the size of the Philippine economy is also expected to drive a rapid increase in GDP per capita, from $3,700 in 2023 to $6,200 in 2030. This represents a notable improvement in the Philippines' GDP per capita since 2000, when GDP per capita was only $1,100 per capita. Rapid household income growth over the next decade will help underpin the growth of the Philippines' domestic consumer market, catalyzing domestic and foreign investment in many sectors of the Philippine economy. The Philippines will also benefit from its membership in the newly implemented RCEP Trade Agreement, 
particularly due to its very favorable treatment of origin rules, which provide cumulative benefits that will help build manufacturing supply chains within the RCEP region in different countries. This will help attract foreign direct investment flows for a wide range of manufacturing and infrastructure projects to RCEP member countries, particularly to low-cost manufacturing hubs like the Philippines. Consequently, the outlook for the Philippine economy over the next decade is very favorable, and significant progress in economic development is expected. In 2021, the Philippine government's Household Income and Expenditure Survey indicated that 20 million people, or about 18.1% of the total population, still live below the poverty line. Rapidly rising GDP per capita and living standards will help underpin a broad improvement in human development indicators and should lead to a significant reduction in the proportion of the population living in extreme poverty by 2030. With all these investments in infrastructure, do you think the Philippines will become one of the most important economies on the Asian continent by 2030? Let me know your answer in the comment box below. And if you like the video, I invite you to subscribe and leave your like for more videos like this one. We'll see you next time.